Hi, this is Mark. Back to uh, give a little bit more information about ORAC. One of the aims of ORAC not only was for a good user experience, but it was also um, to make it easy for other people, including myself, to develop new modules. And I wanted it to be much easier than it is currently because I didn't want people to have to worry too much about things like UI. So I'm going to show how easy it is with uh, ORAC. So the first thing we need to do if we are going to do a new module is to create a new module. So inside the ORAC uh, folder you will find a list of modules in the module folder. I'm doing this all on a uh, Mac just because it's easier for me. Um, but uh, you can also do this on the Organelle directly. Okay, so what we're going to do is first we'll create a new folder and I'm just going to call it XS Simple. So it's going to be a simple simplified sizer. I usually use S to represent synthesizers, F for uh, FX, and I put the X in front just so that I know that this one is an extra one. It's not one of the ones that I uh, deliver normally. So what we need now need to, is actually two files. We need the pure data file, which says what to do. And I'm going to actually take the one, a copy of that one from the default project, the default utility, which is very simple and doesn't have anything extra. And I also need a module JSON file, which we'll see is where we define all the parameters. Now, I could take the default one again, but that's got nothing in it. So what I'm actually going to do is to take one from one of the synthesizers because that's got more, more stuff in it that we can actually see what's going on. Okay, so we're going to copy that. Okay, so now we've done that, life is good. Um, what I'm going to first of all do is to actually show you the module definition file. So this is this file here, and I'm going to load it up in a text editor. You can use any text editor, but this is just my preferred one. Uh, we don't need to see that anymore. Okay, now obviously I copied this from the basic poly, so what I'm going to do is first of all just change it so that it matches what I've really got here, which is access simple. And I'm going to call it uh, simple. Okay, <laughs> just keep it simple. Now, what we can see here is we've got a list of parameters that the patch is going to use. And down here, we've got how they're laid out into pages. Now, this is very important. You can define as many parameters as you want um, for the patch, um, but if you don't put them on a page, you're not going to see them. But also you can do things like put uh, the parameter on multiple pages. That also works. These are not really too connected. Now, if we go up to the first part, which is parameters, we can actually see the important parts. Now, we look at just one, we can see each line is basically a new parameter. Uh, one for transpose, one for wave, one for decay time, and blah, blah, blah. The first part here actually tells you what type of parameter it is. So is it going to contain pitch, or is it a time, or a frequency, etc. So the second one here is a unique name that we're going to use in the patch, and we're going to come across this in a minute. And then uh, you can decide what the hell you want to call this. And then this is what the user sees on the display. And the last three parameters are here for um, a numeric type are minimum, maximum, and the default value. So that's used before uh, the user actually saves the preset. So, okay, let's start and we'll actually just modify this a little bit. So we're going to just call it trans rather than BP trans. We'll leave it as transpose. Uh, perhaps we'll change it to 20, minus 24, plus 24. Why not? Um, we're also going to do, we'll get rid of some of these. I'm going to keep it very simple, obviously. And I'm going to actually make this a cutoff value for a frequency, for a filter. And I'll just call it cutoff. Okay. And we have to define a range. Not a good idea to let filters go down to zero. I'll let it go up to 12K. And I'll say that it's fully open to start with. Okay, that's fine. Now, uh, for this simple synth, at the moment, I don't need a second page. I just need one page. And again, this page is just an identifier. This has to be unique, but apart from that, 
you won't see it, so don't worry about it. Uh, I call the, main, the opening page main always. Um, and then we just need to list within these square brackets the parameters that we've named up here. So these have to not match these IDs that we've given up here. Now, one thing that's important, you'll see that usually these lines have a comma at the end, except for the last one in the group. So here, this is the last one, this is the last one, so that's that. So, save that, that's quite simple. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start all rack. Uh, we don't need this for the moment, so get rid of that. Okay, so Aurax now started. Um, we can see lots of stuff, but we're not really interested in most of this. Now what we want to do is we now want to start editing our module. So if I come to module one, which is the bombing, you have the basic poly in here. Now when we come into here, we can select at the bottom, our new synthesizer. Okay. So where is it? Where is it? Okay, we obviously need to find it. Well, inside here we can actually see all of the slots. So we've loaded this one into slot one. So we just open up slot one, and down here we can actually see it's already auto-generated code to actually load up this module. So that's good. So we can load this, and that's fine. Nothing really very interesting going on here. So now we actually have to do some work. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. We have to actually define our synthesizer. Now remember that. You need to save this module file when we do this. Now, the first thing I always do is just come up to here, these top little bits to point out the change. Right, so this is just to say what the module's called. And here, this is just a, a log. Um, simple, just so you can see it in the log file. You don't have to do that, doesn't matter. Okay, so now let's, let's get working. Okay, so what we need to first of all do is we're going to take some notes, so we're going to unpack them. Uh, oh, unpack them. We're going to then, uh, we're going to transpose it, so we're going to add a uh, note. Uh, we're then going to convert it to uh, a frequency to go into the oscillator. We're going to then use a phaser, because I've got a filter, so I need some harmonics. Um, the phase is, is actually unipolar, so I need to convert it to uh, bipolar. Uh, this is not really designed to be a pure data lesson on how to build synths, by the way. Um, uh, minus um, the one. Okay, now I'm going to just put in a... Um, All right, I'm just going to put in a couple of modifications. This one is actually going to be used for the, the velocity. Um, then I actually want to also just quieten the whole thing down a little bit, uh, otherwise it will get way too loud. Um, and then we're going to come into the filter. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to put a multiplication of one, which won't really do anything, but it just gives me a point to link things up. Okay, now we're going to connect the notes. Um, let me put the back, put, connect the note into here. Okay, so now let's have a little look at what we've got. So essentially, this part here is the filter and output part. This part here is to do with the note. Um, uh, and uh, right, so one thing to note so here, what you can see is the notes come in here. Um, and you can see this dash one. This is actually gets evaluated to the module name. Um, so uh, similarly, you've got the inlets and outs here. So okay, what we want to do is we're going to connect up the outlets of this first, so I don't forget. So we delete those. Now what I'm going to do is actually add this to the uh, inlets, and the reason I'm doing that is so that we can layer synths. Um, so basically, if you put a synth after this, uh, before this synth, you'll get a mixture of sound. So we'll just let the audio pass through. And then what we're going to do is to 
pass in our audio here. And so we're kind of done on that. The next thing we need to do is we've unpacked, we've packed in here. We need to receive those parameters. Now, if you remember from here, we called the parameters trans and cutoff. So, okay, we need to receive these parameters and we can do that here. We can just do receive trans. Now, just like those no inputs, we need to put dollar one at the end. Similarly, with the cutoff, we receive that parameter, and again, it's cutoff and it's dollar one. Okay, so the um, transposition is literally just going to be added to the pitch here, and then the cutoff goes directly to. This is either. Now, ah, one final part thing. So here, um, obviously what's gonna happen is we want it to basically turn on when there's a note on and when the note's off, we wanna turn it off. So we're gonna use the velocity, which is the second parameter here to do that. And the way we do that, we're just gonna divide that by 127. Take that. Now, this is a very cheap gate. Uh, mechanism because all that's going to basically do is turn it on and off probably with a little bit of a click so now we've basically got it now what we want to do is we just want to reload the uh, patch so all we need to do is to come in here load another patch load another module into something and then just reload it okay once we do that again we can open it up in here and voila we have something so does it work it works here so that's it so within 10 minutes we built a new module uh, and obviously that's with talking about it if i don't talk i can do it much faster than that so let's now what I want to show is how easy it is now to modify it. So let's let's just do something very quick. What we're going to do here is edit this patch. We're going to move things up a bit. Get things out of the way. Uh, get stuff over here. All right, okay, let's get a bit of space. What I'm going to do, actually I want that here, is I'm going to create a detune parameter. So I'm going to basically create three of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to just add uh, a detune parameter to it. So we're going to take this pitch. Uh, and then we're going to take away the pitch. And pass in a parameter here so we're going to call it ah, wrong, wrong button. receive detune dollar one that's what we're going to call it okay now i'm going to do this as a percentage so i'm going to actually divide this by a hundred and then so on one of the oscillators it'll be plus, and on the other side it'll be minus. Sometimes I find that any button. Then we simply just need to, the output down here, and actually, no, that's not true, the output here. We need to obviously add the signals together. So we can just do a plus and another plus. So basically all we're doing here is adding two oscillators together. Okay. Save the patch, because I tend to forget. Now we obviously need to make sure that this comes up on the display. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to here. We're gonna add a new parameter. Remember, the last one has to be. We'll set the detune as a default for hung. We'll make it zero to 100%. 
and we'll call it D2. We'll call it D2 as we match this inlet here. And there's a percentage type. Now we obviously have to put it on the page. Now I'm going to show something extra here as well. Uh, let's pretend we've got lots of parameters going on. So actually I need another page. So we're going to create a new page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the filter to the second page. So I'm just going to call it filter. Um, remember, I need a comma to separate these. Uh, and I've forgotten a my editor highlights mistakes. So if you make a mistake, um, what you will find on this is that when you come to uh, initialize the module, you'll find the screen's blank. If it can't parse this file correctly, that's what will happen. So what I've done here is I've just created a second page here. Remember that comma, important. And I've got a comma on these ones, but not on that one. And then I'm going to put the detune on here. So this is like an oscillator page, and then I've got a filter page. Now, the uh, organelle can currently only do four parameters on a page. I'm going to change that in the future, but at the moment, it can only do four pages. So I'm just showing, for example, what would happen if you want to split it out. Now, the great thing you'll notice here is I didn't have to change cutoff at all, um, the parameter. I just moved the things around on the pages, and that's, that's all you need to do. I've saved that file. Then similarly, again, all we need to do now is come in, just switch a module out, and then we'll switch the module back in again. And now you can see it's saying detune on the first page and filter on the second page. And let's hope. That's obviously working. And filter. That seems to work. And now this is a fully fledged module. It's done. If I now, for example, I can do things like come into here. If I, my cycles, press one button. If I go to the polybeats, that it can be sequenced. Now, obviously, this was only a monophonic synthesizer because I didn't use poly to, to do it. Uh, and simply it'll mix, etc. And you can use it, and obviously we can add effects now. And you can still add effects in here. All the things you expect to be able to do in ORAC, and your module is now doing it. Anyway, so I hope that's actually shown you that it's actually very simple. Um, it only took me actually a couple of days to do the conversion to a module um, of well, loads, dozens of modules. Um, so it's very quick to do, very easy to do. Um, so I hope uh, others will also do it as well. Thanks for listening and have a good day. Happy patching.